The question is the House to now adjourn. I give a call to the honourable member for Canning. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tonight, I want to talk about the voice referendum that will be held in less than five weeks. I'm concerned about a few things. I'm concerned about the unfair playing field that the Albanese government has created in setting the rules of this referendum, rules that favour the yes side. The truth is that the Prime Minister has made a mockery of this whole process. He's taken a lot of shortcuts, trashing convention along the way. Indeed, there was no constitutional convention. There was no attempt to build unity on an amendment that would have recognised Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in our constitution. The parliamentary committee process was cut short. There has been no official yes or no campaign so that all Australians can access and consider the competing arguments. Instead, it's been division and wedge politics from the start. Labor has stacked the deck for the yes campaign at every turn. And sadly, the Prime Minister has divided us as a country. But he hasn't done it alone. He's done it with the big end of town. Big business, big tech, big sport and big finance have all stood with the Prime Minister. Yes enjoys huge financial, cultural, political and economic power in this debate. Free flights from Qantas, big dollars from big business, BHP, $2 million, Rio Tinto, $2 million, West Farmers, $2 million, along with support from Woodside Energy, National Australia Bank, ANZ, Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, Woolworths, Coles, Telstra and so on. The Prime Minister refused to grant equal public funding for each side of the referendum because he knew he could count on big money flocking to the Yes campaign, and they sure are delivering. Along with big business and big finance, big sport is backing the Prime Minister's divisive voice campaign. Every major sporting code is on the Yes ticket, and big tech like Facebook run a form of soft censorship with their underhanded RMIT fact-checking operation. Now, for the average Australian out there, it must feel like you don't have a voice, that you can't be heard. Well, tonight I'm giving Peter from Queensland a voice inside this chamber. Peter sent me an email last week, and I think he speaks for many Australians out there, those who love their country, but who don't have the money or the power or the access like those in the Yes campaign. Here is what Peter wrote to me on Saturday, 2nd September. And I quote, I do not need to be welcome to my country. I have great grand uncles who fought in the First World War, including Gallipoli and the Western Front in World War II. My father and his brother fought in New Guinea. My father-in-law fought in Singapore and became a Japanese prisoner of war. My mother's brother died in World War II. They were all trying to save our country. My brother, three brothers-in-law and myself have all served in our country's defence force. My nephew did two tours of Afghanistan and my son is in the army now. I have uncles and cousins who have also served and or are still serving, every one of us serving our, my country. I've done 40 years of community service with local clubs from coaching juniors and seniors to administration to regional and state level, all of it voluntary. I've worked for 50 years paying taxes to my country. I do not need to be welcomed to my country every day on TV and radio and at every sporting event because it's my country as well. Hello, I was born here. My family has over 150 years of history here. I'm not responsible for what happened 230 years ago and I can't do anything about it. I cannot change history. No one can. But I do want to live in a united country. Indigenous people I have grown up with, I have served with, worked with, employed, coached, trained and played sport with, lived with, helped, drank, partied and cried with. So stop the division, please. Stop trying to divide us. If we are one, then we are many. But divided, we are nothing. Divided, we are gone. Be united for our children and our grandchildren so they have hope and a future. Be united and we will be strong. Are you? I am Australian. That's from Peter in Queensland. And Peter, I'm very glad to give you a voice tonight in this chamber, the House of Representatives, the People's House. Thank you.